Okay, so I did say we're about to do a much trickier question um, for exercise 2b. So let's get started on this one that we've got here. It tells us that z is this complex number. And you'll notice straight away that we've got some unknowns in here. We've got a in place of the numerator and in the imaginary place in the denominator. They've also told us that a is a member of the real numbers. So first of all, it says, given that a equals four, find the modulus of z. Well, this is one actually where if you've been told that it's equal to four, you can actually just use your calculator and just dive in straight away with this one. We could just say that z is equal to, 4 plus 3i divided by 2 plus 4i. So you can either do that on your calculators. Um, I'm just going to use my one here rather than turning my camera on. So 4 plus 3i, it's under the shift in the ENG for me. And then 2 plus 4i. And we get 1 minus a half i. So that's 1 minus, I'm going to write it as a fraction. I'm a bit, a bit more into fractions for this. So if I want to find the modulus of this, I'm going to find the modulus of z by doing the square root of 1 squared plus a half squared. I can ignore that negative there that I've got. I've probably got an absolute value function on here, but I can't see it. So I'm just going to go like this. So it's going to be 1 squared, which is 1 plus a half squared. And that is root 5 over 2. So part A of the question was nice and easy. Part B is where things get a little bit more interesting. So it says show that there is only one value of a for which the argument of z equals pi over 4 and find this value. OK, so I think at this point here, it's going to be pretty difficult to do anything with it whilst we have a complex number that isn't in the standard form of x plus i, y. So this is the standard form we want to get it into. So you may need to remember some stuff from chapter one. But if I have a plus 3i and I'm dividing it by 2 plus ai, there is a way to get it to look like this. And the way to get it to look like this is to realise the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by, see if you can remember what it should be by, but it's going to be 2 minus ai, the complex conjugate of the denominator. I don't know why, I just like seeing brackets around these. It reminds me that I'm doing like double bracket expansion. So for the numerator, I'm going to have my 2a, that's a multiplied by 2, and my minus a squared i. I'm then going to have 6i, and I'm going to have plus 3a. That comes from 3i multiplied by minus a i. You'd get minus 3a i squared, which becomes plus 3a. And then the denominator, sorry, the, um, yeah, the denominator is just going to be the 2 times 2, which is 4. The other bits are going to cancel and you have your plus a squared. So let's tidy that up a little bit more. In the numerator, we have got 5a. I'm just going to factorise out the i here. So I will have 6 minus a squared i. And each of these bits is going to be divided by 4 plus a squared. If you wanted to, you could have just seen it as the whole thing, but being divided by 4 plus a squared like this. But I kind of prefer it as just 5a over 4 plus a squared, the real part, and 6 minus a squared over 4 plus a squared i. So now that z is written in that form, we need to go back to the information which told us that the argument of z was pi over 4. So let's just actually think, what does it mean if the argument of something is pi over 4? Let's try and draw what it looks like. Well, pi over 4 being measured in the positive direction like this is going to be landing exactly here, right? It's going to be landing where the angle is pi over 4. So there's a couple of things we know about this. Let's call this part of the complex number y, because it's the imaginary part, and this part here x. Well, what do you know about y and x? You may find it easy to think of this as 45 degrees. Well, that kind of triangle that we're just talking about, if it's 45 degrees, we actually know it's an isosceles right angle triangle. We know that X and Y must be the same as each other because that would be 45 degrees and that also would be 45 degrees. If you can't quite see that, though, let's see if we can explore this in a different kind of way. Let's go back to that red triangle. We know for this red triangle that the tan of pi over 4 would be equal to the opposite 
divided by the adjacent. Now you should know what tan of pi over four is off the top of your head, but the tan of pi over four is just one. So we get one equals y over x, multiplying by x, and we get x equals y, which is exactly what we were just saying here with this isosceles triangle that we were drawing. So what we know about this complex number here is that the x part and the y part must be equal to each other because the argument is pi over four. So I'm just gonna write that down. So we know that x equals y because the argument of z equals pi over four. If it wasn't pi over four, let's say it was pi over three or five pi over six, then this technique down here would be a little bit more useful to use. Um, but this just happened to be quite an easy one with the fact we knew that they were going to be equal. So let's just continue now with the problem. We now know that the x part, which is 5a over 4 plus a squared, must be equal to the y part, which is 6 minus a squared over 4 plus a squared. Well, we can multiply both sides by this 4 plus a squared here. So we get 5a is 6 minus a squared, and we've got this quadratic that comes up. So obviously I'm going to put everything to one side. So that's a squared plus 5a minus six equals zero. Now you've all got quadratic solvers on your calculator. I'm not gonna to need to show you that bit here, but I'm gonna to go to my quadratic solver and I'm gonna put in the coefficients as one, five, and minus six. And my solutions to this are a equals one or a equals minus six. That's a bit odd though, because it said, show that there is only one value of a, which makes this true and find this value. So I think what we probably need to do is test both of these values and just see what happens. So let's say if a equals one, then z would be equal to, remind ourselves of what the, the calculation was. So it's one plus three i over two plus i. One plus three i over two plus i. I'm just gonna put that on our calculator. So that's one plus three i over two plus i, so I don't have to do any of the realizing myself, which is equal to one plus i. Now, just a quick sketch of that, and you will see that one plus i would be here, and it does indeed have an argument of pi over four. So if a equals one, z equals this, and the argument of z does equal pi over four. So it looks like our answer is going to be a equals one. But I want to explore why this one might not work. So if a is equal to minus 6, z would be equal to minus 6, that's where a was, plus 3i over 2 minus 6i. Let's see what that gives us and why that doesn't work. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to change that to a minus 6, and I'm going to change the 1 at the top to a minus 6. So we get minus 3 quarters minus 3 quarters i. So we get minus three quarters minus three quarters i. Okay, so the x and the y values are the same, which is what we said over here. X and y were gonna be the same as each other. X is minus three quarters and y is minus three quarters. But is the argument of z going to be pi over four? Well, let's just draw a really quick sketch. So it's going minus three quarters left and minus three quarters down. It's actually all the way over here instead. So the argument isn't going to be pi over four. The argument is actually going to be this section. Well, this bit here is gonna be pi over four. This bit is going to be three pi over four. So the argument of Z in this case is actually minus three pi over four because it's going in that negative direction. So A equals minus six doesn't work. So it's not a solution, okay? The reason this is, um, has come up is because of the fact that when we do the tan of pi over 4, we say that y and x are equal to each other. We still get y and x being equal to each other, but instead of them being in this first quadrant up here, they've actually ended up in this third quadrant down here, meaning that we don't have this match. So I actually took this question from the mixed exercise of chapter two. I think it's question 10. Um, and it might be worth trying some of those trickier questions from the mixed exercise after you've done some of exercise 2b. Exercise 2b uses lots of different skills. It will ask you to find the modulus and it will ask you to find the argument, but it will also be testing some of your skills from chapter one of Corpure year one as well. 
Okay, good luck. Hope you found that question useful to go through.